Hello and welcome to the FT's Business Clinic live from the Financial Times. I am Claire Barrett, the FT's Consumer Editor, and today I'll be joined by my colleague Andy Bounds, who's the FT's Enterprise Editor, and we are going to be talking about bounce back loans, a subject many of you feel very strongly about. Now, let's start with the good news. More than a million bounce back loans have been granted to businesses, small businesses in particular, since May. £38 billion, pounds, in fact, has flowed out, helping businesses who are struggling in the wake of COVID-19. Now, that is the good news. There was more good news a couple of weeks ago when the Chancellor announced that instead of six years to repay the loan, businesses who've taken one out will now have nine years, various little options you can um, apply relating to interest and payment holidays, which we'll go into the detail of later. And moreover, he's extended the application period for a bounce back loan until the end of November. Now, the bad news, unfortunately, as many of you know, who've been in touch over the last few days, is that despite that application period being extended, many small businesses who haven't already received their buy buyback loan are increasingly experiencing problems applying for one. Now, we've written about this in the FT this week, um, some of the lenders, the 28 who originally signed up with the British Business Bank, have either stopped offering the loan or paused applications. And pretty much everyone involved in the scheme is now saying existing customers only. So what can you do? Well, you've come to the right place. The Business Clinic will attempt to answer all of the questions that have been coming in. Me and Andy will be online for the next 30 minutes answering your questions. You can put things to us either by um, writing in the comment field on the story in ft.com. If you're watching us on ft.com, that will flash up on my iPad. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can use the live chat function. And the same goes for everyone watching us on LinkedIn. Hello to you all. I can see um, that filling up. So Andy, let's start with um, some broader questions. I mean, tell us why are the banks getting cold feet about bounce back loans? Well, as you pointed out earlier, Claire, there are already 1.2 million of them have been issued. Uh, and, you know, 38 billion pounds worth of money has gone out the door. And I think what's happened is with the new boost given by the chance of saying this is going to go on for longer than we anticipated, a lot of businesses are now scrambling, thinking, I wasn't expecting a second lockdown. Now there's a second lockdown coming. Uh, you know, my business is not recovered as I'd hoped. I'm going to go in for these loans. And and they've besieged the banks, quite rightly. Uh, the banks are soft peddling because, for a start, they've got a backlog to get through. Uh, they're also getting worried about staff resource. They could be selling mortgages. They could be selling, uh, you know, uh, loans to consumers. So there's lots of other things they could be doing with that staff time. Uh, they're worried about the default rate on the loans, which the uh, government has said will probably be up to 50, you know up to 60 percent uh, now the banks are guaranteed to get their money back but they still have to chase anybody who does default and that obviously takes time reputational damage uh, you we can already see the headlines of uh, you know banks going after small businesses who haven't been able to pay this money back um, so there's a number of reasons uh, and there's also some worries about fraud you know we've seen stories recently in the media about you know, people being able to set up companies because they're very light touch loans, uh, not many checks. Some of them are turned around in 24, 48 hours. Uh, so they're a little bit worried about fraud as well. Well, certainly um, the worries about fraud, I think, have escalated recently. We'll get on to um, how this is affecting people's applications, because at first the desire was don't ask questions, get the money to the businesses before um, they get into serious problems. But now, certainly with the worries about fraud, um, there are a lot more checks um, going on. Now, based on what you've just said, is that why so many banks, those 28 lenders on the um, website, are now saying that you can only get a bounce back loan if you're an existing customer of that bank? It's quite remarkable because you, you obviously heard about this a week or so ago. You know, you were getting calls from people and, and messages from people struggling to get a loan. So I looked at the 28 lenders on the on the British Business Bank website, which the government likes to cite. There's 28 lenders out there, the British Business Bank, the 28 lenders out there. But as you click through lender after lender, it will either say we're experiencing you know, difficulties, we're not taking any more applications, or it will say, are you a customer of ours? If not, try your own bank first. Then your own bank might you know, soft pedal as well. A lot of the alternative lenders have frankly run out of money because they were 
funding this from uh, people like the British Business Bank and other sources. So they've struggled to get the liquidity to actually get the loan. So it's quite remarkable really, that this, this was a big uh, policy to help out British business. Uh, and the idea was that anybody could get one, you know, up to 50,000 50, pounds. And the reality has become, they've almost become rationed by default. Okay, so I'm going to read out a couple of um, statistics now before we get into the latest on which banks are still accepting switching applications, which I can already see from the live stream um, is the number one topic um, of conversation. So HSBC, now they pulled out of offering bounce back loans to new customers last week. They also said they were putting a pause on all applications for new business accounts um, until mid-December, so after that 30th of November deadline. And some people close to the bank say that they were receiving 10,000 applications per day, which gives you an idea of how some banks pull out, the other banks are just seeing applications just mounting. Um, now, there's another bank uh, that I want to talk about, Conister. Now, Andy, you've been talking uh, to, to Conister this week. They're um, a small, small new lender based on the Isle of Man. Um, and they decided quite recently um, to get into the bounce back loan scheme. And you've got some stats to show how they were just swamped with demand. Yeah, I have. I mean, they, they, they initially applied for £10 million from the, um, the British Business Bank to fund this uh, because they are a lender. That I don't think they have many deposits. Um, they received applications for £162 million worth of lending, which just shows the scale of demand that's out there. Uh, most of that came within 72 hours of them going live. And it was people who'd been turned away by their own bank or other lenders who came to them. So understandably, they had to stop. Um, they had over they had over 4,000 people applying uh, and they had to stop and say, well, we're just going to take 301 at the moment. Uh, so those 301 are basically going to eat up all the funding that they've got. Uh, they would like, I think, to have more money from the British Business Bank or other, other sources to be able to service more customers. But they don't have the resources themselves to do that. Sure. And we should point out, Conister have told us, um, that of those um, customers um, who they've um, approved for the funding, they're working their way through um, that list and around 60% of applications um, have been approved. So if you haven't heard back yet, you could be in their queue. Unfortunately, this is the story um, for, for banks everywhere. It's a waiting game. Now, Andy, the topic of which lenders are still accepting new business banking customers. Now, the only way, if your bank is not offering the loan, um, that you can get one is to become a customer of another bank. But of course, some banks are saying even if you switch, they'll only offer the bounce back loan to customers who are on their books before a certain date. Yeah, that's certainly the case with um, Bank of Scotland and um, one or two others where they'll only take applications from customers who are already a customer before May uh, or, or in May. One or two other banks are a bit cryptic so you go on the website and they say try your own bank first if not come back to us but they don't really say how quickly you'd be able to open an account with them um starling bank is got a waiting list on its on its uh, website and then they want they i think they're probably going to vet you know who they would like to be lending to and what types of businesses um so the only um the only one who seems to be sort of the most open is Skipton Building Society, but even there, you have to get an invoice discount facility, an invoice finance facility with them, which effectively means becoming a customer with with tougher credit checks. And invoice finance doesn't suit everybody. Uh, and of course, that you have to get accepted for the invoice finance before you can get the bounce back loan. Um, well, we've, got a few, loan sorry. Um, we've got a few people saying um, on the live stream chat they're on the wait list um, with Starling Bank. Um, and they haven't heard anything yet. I mean, just a little bit more insight um, into Starling. You may have noticed we've quoted a, a fellow called Mr. Bounceback um, in the FT story. He runs a website called mrbounceback.com. He's an anonymous um, businessman in the north um, who's done this out, you know, just to help other small businesses. And he keeps a very interesting record of all of the things that people who are applying for bounce back loans are telling him. And drawn from those experiences, we've had a good look at the Starling. Um, bank and it is selective um, as you say Andy I mean their wait list on their website says you've got to put your company number in um, which suggests that they would prefer applications from businesses that are registered um, on companies house rather than the sole traders and how much to borrow and then they'll email you back 
um, if they select you um, to apply. And the small print, interestingly, says that they will do a credit check, not just on your company as part of that application process, but also on individual um, directors um, in some cases. Um, then other banks who are all Andy that are offering that, Metro Bank um, is one of them. Yes, that's right. Yeah, they, they will still allow a limited company to open an account and then you can apply for a bounce back loan after that. Um, sole traders have to go into a branch um, in order to access an account. Um, obviously, Metro Bank is quite a new bank, doesn't have the biggest branch network uh, out there. So you'll probably have to end up in a big city um, to get that appointment. Um, and there's also, you know, you need to make sure you've got all your paperwork in order, accounts, tax records, business plan, and so on. Uh, if they're going to take you on as a sole trader, there's become a big dividing line as well between companies and sole traders. It's even harder for sole traders, uh, and lots of banks are, are simply uh, making it harder or even refusing to, uh, to to offer loans to sole traders. Absolutely, um, and we've got a comment here from FT Reader, um, Yusuf Azen. Um, he banks with Barclays. Um, for what it's worth, um, he said he's had very long wait times on the phone. He is a sole trader. Um, and because he used his personal account to conduct business, he's been sent across the country, he says, to attend bank meetings to be able to get the loan. I live in London, says Yusuf, and I was advised to attend an appointment in Burnley, more than 249 miles away, as there are no appointments available in London. But I mean, clearly, Andy, this seems to be, you know, the, the banks are just very keen to eyeball customers, make sure they're real businesses, and crucially, they want to see documents. This is very different from the bounce back loan scheme in May where money was being given very quickly with no questions asked. Yeah, I think things have really changed. I remember those early weeks when the banks would be updating you on a weekly basis of how much they'd given out to how many businesses. Um, and we must remember that, you know, 1.2 loans have been written, 1.2 million loans have been written. There are only uh, just over 5 million small businesses and, and sole traders in this country. So, you know, you're talking about 25% uh, almost of the, uh, of the of the population has a bounce back loan already. Another who knows how many percent is is, is trying to get them. Uh, and the banks are making it tricky. Um, and the interesting question is, you know, it, will the government lean on them? Because this was a policy that was supposed to be implemented via the banks, It's a, but it's effectively backed by the taxpayer. Uh, it's government money, a lot of it at the end of the day. Um, and the banks were supposed to be the facilitation tool. Um, and they now appear to be acting as a sort of uh, a sieve come, uh, you know, uh, blocked drain um, on this money. Um, so it'd be interesting to see whether the Chancellor, having made his announcement, uh, will actually, you know, do anything to make sure that this money does go to the people that need it. Well, certainly the Treasury provided a statement for the story that we wrote for the FT um, yesterday, um, saying that they were monitoring the situation closely and that some banks who were no longer offering a loan um, may restart um, offering. They recognise that there are backlogs um, of applications, but but indeed we'll keep putting them under pressure. Just a few more um, uh, accounts, uh, banks rather, who, who are still accepting um, applications for new business accounts. Again, it's not a guarantee that you'll get the buyback loans. You have to get the account first and then apply for the loan. Um, but Barclays, um, you can apply for a business account with Barclays via their online banking app. Um, it is taking um, a, a while longer than it usually does to do that. But then if you've been accepted for the business account, then you can apply um, for the bounce back loan. Um, Skipton, we have mentioned, um, but the other two um, are Clyde's, Clydesdale Bank and Yorkshire Bank. Now, um, Mr. Bounce Back um, says that they are, well, they're both part of Virgin Money uh, for starters. So they have similar policies on things, although they are different banks. Um, he is still speaking to people who are able to open um, business accounts with Clydesdale and Yorkshire, um, but the website does very clearly warn that there are delays um, because they're receiving so many requests. You know, you may expect to wait sort of five to six weeks, which is pushing ever closer to the 30th of November deadline. Um, but so many customers um, who are speaking with Mr. Bounceback are finding that after they've been through that process, shown their documentation, answered all the questions that they are able um, to open an account and he's actually praised um, their customer service. Now, one of the things that he says that these banks are good at sorting out that are dogging a lot of other people who have either switched banks or on multiple wait lists is the problem of the banks checking up with the other banks to see if you've already had a bounce back loan issued because of course the rules clearly state 
you can only have one bounce back loan per business. And if there's a Topco, um, a holding company, and two companies which are sort of part of the same entity, then you can only have one bounce back loan for the whole lot. Now, Andy, certainly those checks um, that the banks are doing often are resulting in these um, huge administrative nightmares for companies who've been on a waiting list with one bank and then have to get a letter from that bank to give to the um, lender who is offering them the loan to prove that they haven't already had any money. I mean, that's a really tough situation to be in. Yeah, I mean, the, the bureaucracy is um, is mounting up. And as you say, you know, we're only seven, eight weeks away from the, from the deadline to get this bounce back loan. Um, so if you're trying to extricate yourself from one application uh, with one bank, open an account with another bank, um, and you can't have two going on at the same time. A lot of banks insist that you have to close down one with the other bank before you join them. Um, you can understand people feeling nervous and, 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 and panicking to some extent. And um, again, could there be a question of whether this deadline might be extended uh, from November the 30th? Everyone will be you know, going back out and, and, and working. And of course, that hasn't become the case. So you're now looking at a bit, uh, you know, if you're a hospitality business, you might be looking at, you know, a lot longer uh, of subdued trading than you anticipated. And it's perfectly understandable that people want to apply for the support that's available to them. And interesting, Andy, there that you've mentioned hospitality, because anecdotally, a lot of the people who are getting in touch with me on Twitter um, or emailing me um, are from within the hospitality business um, or run a leisure related company and are saying, you know, is that the reason why um, the banks are being funny about giving me access to the bounce back loan? I mean, I, I just don't know the answer to that question. I think that, you know, clearly the statistics that we've mentioned on this video, they're being absolutely overwhelmed um, with, with, with demand from all kinds of businesses. But um, a very good question has just come in from um, FT reader Ladydog70, love your moniker, um, she says, how do customers go about extending their existing bounce back loan loan term as per the Chancellor's announcement? Now, by this, she means the six year repayment um, from the nine year repayment. What do you think about that, Andy? Well, we don't have the full details yet, but I think it should be good news because I just, the, the whole bounce back scheme has been changed to become from a six year loan to a nine year loan. So one imagines that you will get a letter communication from your bank, possibly when time comes to start repaying, which is a year after you've um, after you've taken the loan out, in which they will give you a schedule of repayments spread over nine years uh, rather than six. So that should be an automatic process, um, but will it remains to be seen. But but it should be. And just to remind anyone watching, if you didn't know, the terms of the bounce back loan are there is no repayments at all um, for the first twelve months. You won't have to pay anything back. Um, <clears throat> and then after that point, you can pay the whole loan back in full um, if you wanted to um, with no penalties um, or interest, which I think prompted many businesses at the start um, when they were first offering these loans to take out the maximum possible, which is 25% um, of your existing turnover. Um, now, another question um, has come in here. Um, now, this is from a taxi driver. He took out a bounce back loan um, for a certain amount. Um, he could have taken out more, but at that time he didn't because he didn't think that things would turn out to be so bad. Andy, can he have another bite at the cherry? I fear the answer is no. I suspect it's going to be down to the discretion of the bank. I mean, I don't think there is um, an automatic top up. Um, some people have talked about switching between, you know, the bounce back loan and the C bills, which is a slightly different um, category of loan, and, and all back the other way. But um, one would imagine that you're stuck with what you what you went for for the first time. But you can certainly contact your bank uh, and ask them: Is it possible to to top it up? Um, but they're not certainly not obliged to, unfortunately. Okay, so some some quick fire questions um, coming in for you now. Je Glenn Johnson on YouTube says, "Why have some banks stopped the loans? What have they got to lose if it's one hundred percent government backed?" Well, a good question. It is a good question, uh, and going back to what I said at the beginning, it's still not cost free for the bank. Uh, they've got to write the loan, they've got to do the checks, albeit they're light touch, but they've got to deal with the paperwork. They've got to. Uh, you know, set up repayments. They, if 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 repayments don't come in, they've got to write letters and chase people. 
and then they've got to take some action. They can't take your house or, or your, main, you know, your main asset, but there's still guarantees against certain other assets that they've got to try and get before they can then go to the government and say, uh, give us the money, please. So, you know, you could have a 20,000 loan, uh, which might cost the bank several thousand pounds to service. Um, so that's why, uh, the, you know, they're, 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 they're pushing back against these and, and, um, and slowing down the, uh, the, the, the amount they're doing. OK, another comment here coming in from Gaffar M um, on YouTube. He says, I live in London and my appointment to see the manager at Barclays was after two and a half months in Manchester. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's just lovely, remarkable, isn't it? Lovely excuse uh, to, to, to visit Manchester, <laughs> of course. But I mean, that's partly, Andy, because of the way that the branch network of, of banks has just been decimated in recent years. And so much of business banking, um, you know, yeah. is now online. The days of having a bank manager who knew you personally and approved loan requests are, are long gone. Yeah, I mean, that is remarkable. And these are the stories that only come out when you talk to readers and, and people actually in the process. You know, we're... We can't find that out any other way. So it's great to have that kind of information because it's, you know, it's effectively a block on on doing business. You know, these things were set up to be very easy to get hold of. Um, and that's not proving to be the case for many people. And, um, you know, that's quite remarkable. I mean, the, I mean, the chap earlier who said he could be sent to Burnley. I mean, at least there still is a branch in Burnley because that's the kind of town where so many banks you know have, have gone from those those kind of places. And um, but to have to go from London to Burnley just seems or Manchester just seems uh, ridiculous. Well, Gaffer, I hope it was a profitable trip for you and that you were granted the loan. Now, a very sad comment here from Just Pappy Now, who is commenting on the live stream on YouTube. Um, they say these long waits, incompetence and delays are the difference between a business folding and a business staying afloat. I mean, unfortunately, very true. Yeah, I mean, that that is this again these are supposed to be light touch you know get the money out the door quick in, in a crisis um all that can be said is there you know there, there may be other sources of help available for example if you're in a lockdown area there are some grants starting to come forward uh, from local authorities you know remember we had the the council business rate scheme in the first wave of lockdown you know some of that sort of stuff is starting to be put in place again um so anywhere you can find, I mean, our, our colleague Chris Ty up in Newcastle contributed yes. to our story where there was actually a local government grant scheme, you know, which was a separate, completely separate, but just to try and help people out. Of course, that was deluged as well. And they ended up having to give out the funds by ballot. Uh, and these were grants of only up to £3,000. But nevertheless, it's worth looking at, you know, if there's any way you can get that bridging money until your bounce back loan comes in, um, see, see, you know, do, do your best to do that. OK, now we're going to talk a little bit about frozen accounts now. Um, we've had quite a few people sending in stories about how either they've got the bounce back loan, it's been paid into their account and then it's been frozen um, or that they've just been having problems in general um, with banks freezing accounts, which, you know, is unfortunately on the rise under on the lockdown at the moment. So um, people who've, who've uh, got in touch include Oma who says Barclays blocked his current account and business account after he withdrew some funds um, from his bounce back loan. He says, I can't go to work because I don't have any money. Um, we also have um, another comment from David, um, who emailed earlier to say his bank has told him that it's going to close his account um, after he complained about the bounce back loans process. He says, without a business account, how can a business continue to trade? Where do I receive credit card payments and how do we pay our VAT, P-A-Y-E, and corporation taxes? Well, good points um, from, from both. And if you are a business in this situation with a frozen account, you really have, have our sympathies. But the rules are, Andy, that banks and building societies, if they suspect fraud or any other um, reason, they have got the right to put a stop on your account and, and freeze it. Although in the majority of cases, it's lifted after they've done some checks. Yes, I mean, even... Well, I've never got that far, but even with the personal account, sometimes you make a credit card payment, you get a call, don't you, where they say, oh, you know, this has been used in another country. Was it you? Because we've we've stopped the payment going through. Um, I think you just have to make them clear what your position is. Uh, and I think there are routes such as, you know, the ombudsman that you could approach. Um, if it gets really, really bad, I guess you could go to a local MP or something and say, look, you know, this is really destroying my business. So, um, but they do, sadly, as you say, have that right. And because of all these fraud worries about bounce back loans, 
Um, I think banks are getting much more sophisticated about, you know, spotting things and much of it will be computer generated. So there may not even be someone that knows you. You might find if you ring up the branch manager, if you did have a relationship with somebody in particular, just say, did you realize, you know, this has happened to me? Can you do anything about it? Because this will all be driven by computer systems, just detecting irregularities or or so on. Um, yes. So I hope you, you know, can get it sorted. And certainly, um, I asked Mr. Bounceback about this. There's lots of examples on his website um, where people are having to deal with frozen accounts. And of course, phoning up a bank and getting through to anyone to do anything uh, at the moment, all I would say is, you know, you better like Vivaldi because uh, you're going to be on hold for a long time. But Mr. Bounceback's top tips to people who contact him in this situation is if you can try and find a branch that still has um, a business management function um, within it and try and get in with all of your paperwork and kind of throw yourself on the mercy, um, if you like, of a of a business manager to try and get your case um, moved up the chain. There is an appeal process um, with the banks. And as we were saying earlier, a lot of the worries about fraud stem from the fact that you may have applied for one of the bounce back loan accounts or been on a waiting list with other banks. Now, the banks, under the rules um, set out um, by the regulators, they don't have to tell you why your account's been frozen, which is quite infuriating. But it may be because they've got a record of you having applied for a loan on another bank's account. And as I said earlier, there are letters that you can get from lenders who you've applied to, uh, kind of standard PDF um, type things that they're emailing out. And they are becoming um, more practiced um, at doing this because it's just affecting so many people. Um, now, Andy, a couple more comments um, have come in um, on the YouTube Starling Bank. We've um, we've dealt with that. Um, Tez Wu on YouTube says, I've registered my interest um, for a bounce back loan, have been added to a list, but I haven't received an application form. Um, some say they've waited days, some say weeks, and others have even said months. I mean, unfortunately, there's there's no guarantee um, with these waiting lists that you're going to get dealt with before the cutoff point. Yeah, I mean, I sort of increasingly feel that perhaps there is a role here for uh, lobbying of the Treasury. You know, the, art of, the November the 30th is essentially an artificial deadline. It, it, it could be moved, um, you know, perhaps if MPs kicked up a fuss and you get in touch with your... Uh, honourable member, you know, you 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 could have some sway here. Uh, I mean, going to a branch is a good idea. I, I wouldn't advocate direct action necessarily, but I do remember in the last banking crisis, uh, we remember Stephen Hester was brought in to clean up RBS, who had all sorts of skeletons in the cupboard dealing with small businesses. And I, I went to an event in Wakefield at which a chap turned up with a briefcase and sat in the front row next to me. And I sort of looked at it and said, what's in there? And he said, you wait and find out. And uh, as Hester got up to speak, he opened the briefcase, pulled out a boot and presented it to Mr. Hester or Sir Stephen, as he was then saying, you know, I'm giving you the boot because of the way you've treated my business, uh, which got him, you know, got him some attention. I think he got an apology and he may have got, you know, some uh, some better treatment as a result of it because he got a write up in the Financial Times. So, you know, uh, I'm not advocating that, but there are ways and means. OK, well, certainly a lot of FT readers are very concerned, as the banks clearly are about the possibility for fraud um, on bounce back loans. Um, FT reader Shelby says, other than the tiny chance of being caught, is there anything that stops someone from spending these loans on whatever they want? Well, that's a good question because obviously there are big limits and you can't pay off other debt, for example. Um, so a lot of people use the credit card to run the business. Um, it must be very tempting to think, well, I'm paying 20 odd percent or whatever on that. I can get uh, a 2% loan, uh, two, two and a bit percent loan from the bounce back. Um, you've got to, you know, HMRC have said they will be looking into these things retrospectively. So, you know, you can only trust that they will do that job. Uh, and there's a decent chance of them catching people. But, um, yeah, it's, there's there's no the bank's not controlling where this money goes afterwards. Um, let, let's put it that way. And uh, I think so a lot you... of people are concerned about the twelve month repayment um, mm. window. Because... Uh, and and who knows what the economy will look like in twelve months, Simon? A lot of people who take them out in good faith might find that actually, you know, they can't keep going, um, and 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 they're not making the repayments. So I think we'll be you know revisiting this in uh, in a year's time. Um, we've also got some queries from FT Reader Felt Cap, um, who's asking specifically about companies 
um, especially limited companies who um, might be tempted to use the bounce back loan um, to finance um, dividend payments or refinance shareholder loans. Now, I've done a, a little bit of looking into this um, for you, Feltcap. I mean, the first thing I'd say is it's quite hard to find anything anywhere that actually sets out the rules in black and white of what you can and cannot um, use the bounce back loans for. Obviously, when you take one out from the bank, then you get their full terms um, and conditions, but it's quite hard to um, to, to find the details. But in general, it's general running costs of the business, um, which that you can use the proceeds um, of the loan for. And that apparently, um, according to accountants, can include paying staff salaries, including director salaries, although you can't give anybody a pay rise. Um, but of course, as most limited company directors keep the PAYE element of their pay very low and take most of their um, income as a dividend from the profits, that's what you're um, going to run into difficulties for, because, of course, you can't take a dividend from a company that isn't profitable. And if you did, then um, there's a high chance that you'd get on the wrong side um, of HMRC. Now, as for directors borrowing the bounce back loan funds from the company, again, I've spoken to a couple of accountancy firms um, about this and they concur that like technically this could be possible. But if that money isn't repaid, within nine months from the end of when your corporation tax um, period is due, um, then HMRC could demand that you pay 32.5% um, tax on whatever the value of that loan is. And the directors would also have to declare it um, as a benefit in kind. So quite complicated um, rules there. But obviously, Andy, one of the questions is, yeah, with so many loans issued, how on earth are they going to be able to follow up and do all of these kinds of checks? Well, that's right. I mean, HMRC is not, not overstaffed, is it? And, and we're talking about 1.2 million loans here, of which, you know, even the government's saying as many as 400,000 to, to, to 700,000 could, could go bad. Um, and that's an awful lot of sorting out the, the ones that went bad because of honest reasons and the company couldn't keep going uh, to, to, the, to the charlatans and the frauds. Um, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, some, some other comments coming in here. P Peter Brooks on um, LinkedIn says, delaying business accounts. I went to Tide. It took two days to open my new business account. No hassle. Great service. Well, well done, Peter. I mean, certainly this was the case with most of the banks a few months ago. But um, Andy, Tide is one of the banks that was offering um, new accounts, was offering the bounce back loan and now has had to put a pause on that. Yeah, Tide is another of those lenders that relies on other people's funds, you know, borrowing itself uh, or getting funds from the British Business Bank to lend out to people. Um, so they simply were besieged with demand and had to pull out of the market. They're desperately trying to get back in. They'd love to get back in. They'd love to lend again, but they need to find a source of funds to do that. Um, Stephen Daniels on LinkedIn says some businesses would have wouldn't have taken the loan um, in the first place when they were first announced in May. Um, but they're now finding that new restrictions to their business mean the loan is needed, yet they could be stopped um, by not having taken it in the early stages. Well, certainly that echoes the sentiments of many people who've been getting in touch. Um, Mark Hillman on YouTube, he says that, um, that he was granted a bounce back loan, um, paid into his client account, and then um, the bank demanded the money back. Uh, we covered that earlier, talking about um, how um, some banks are freezing accounts. Um, when they've done um, checks. Um, then um, an interesting um, comment here from Tago Seedler, sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, um, on YouTube. He says, there's a big lack of legal advice for small business company owners. If a bank approves you sign and they don't pay, aren't they in breach? Um, well, certainly, Andy, lots of um, people here who are, who are commenting are very, very angry and increasingly desperate that their businesses can't go on unless they get this money. Yeah, I mean, as I say, the mechanism, the, the, the Treasury decided on the mechanism using the banks because they wanted a screen, understandably. They didn't want people to be going straight to the government and asking for money and getting given money. So they used the bank as a screen, um, and the banks, are therefore, are doing their job to some extent, but they're simply overwhelmed uh, in many ways as well. And I think this whole question of a November deadline perhaps needs um, needs raising again because the terms have changed. We had a, we, you know, everything seemed to work quite smoothly actually for the first few months. I mean, we weren't picking up these issues, were we at all? Um, you know, in, in, in lockdown itself, when bounce back loans first came in, the challenge has been 
banks want to get on with writing other business as well. Uh, there's another surge in bounce back loans because of a, a, of growing restrictions um, and, and other lenders going out of the market. So, um, you know, despite the chancellor standing up and saying, you know, there's, we'll keep this going till uh, November, he's probably got to do something else to actually make sure that that pledge is implemented and, and people can okay. get access to the money. Well, just a few more comments before um, we shut up shop for the day. Um, Dee Patterson, um, she comments on LinkedIn. Hello, Dee. Um, she says, I underborrowed from the bounce back loan back in May. It would be great to top it up as I did not expect that things would be this bad for so long. I thought I was being prudent, but I now regret that I did not borrow more. Um, I mean, Andy, I really sympathise with Dee and others in this predicament because, of course, with the loan terms changed, you know, repaying a debt over nine years as opposed to six years, um, if people had known that at the time, then they could have had confidence to, to borrow more. Yeah, I mean, the rules have changed, and but the implementation system hasn't really kept up, has it, with the change? Um, that That's the gap we're, we're meeting here. Uh, and I hope Dee can go to her bank and, and ask them, you know, what they can do. Can can they top it up for her? Well, I mean, I don't think they can top up the bounce yeah. back loan, but there may um, she may have um, access to other other sources of lending. I mean, again, um, the rules um, say that you can only have one loan per business, and the way that it mm. seems to be implied from what people are telling me is that it's one loan and mm. that's it. Um, when you've mm. got it, you can't. Um, you can't increase the size of it. Um, just one final comment coming in from Adam Davies, um, who's watching us on YouTube. He says, the financial ombudsman, complete waste of time. Oh, dear. I'm sorry to hear that, Adam. Um, he says, we've had three investigations in front of them and they haven't um, moved um, for months. Um, and he's also tried lobbying his local MP. I mean, I think, again, the problem with um, the, the backlogs, the delays, the wait times to get through on the phone, if you have then got to um, appeal um, anything through the financial ombudsman, um, at best, you know, that process can take months. And that's not when we're um, dealing with COVID and not when there's all kinds of um, complaints being brought through the system against um, against banks for, for not granting loans. I mean, it, it, Andy, unfortunately, it does seem um, to me that, you know, for some businesses, the waiting game, you know, they're going to run out of time. It's going to be too much. I mean, it does look that way. I mean, what one ray of hope, I suppose, you know, thinking, I think we had a question earlier on insurance, um, you know, having a business interruption insurance, which which the insurers for a long time refused to pay out on. And then the, the FCA brought a test case. Uh, and actually, you know, insurers are now having to accept that business was interrupted and coronavirus is covered in many cases. Again, it's going to take a while because it's, it's, it's insurer by insurer, policy by policy. But, you know, these these things can change um, and, and regulators could get involved um, and we'll just have to see if that happens. Um, otherwise, the only thing is our usual advice of be as prudent as possible, isn't it? And cut as many costs as you can um, and, and try to survive uh, until the economy starts um, starts recovering, you know, hopefully in the spring, if not before. OK, well, listen, we're going to wrap it up for today. A huge thank you to everybody who's got in touch, um, either through FT.com or on the live chat to give us your opinions. We really, really value hearing direct from small businesses. Um, and that's what the Business Clinic is here to do. And you do help to inform our reporting on these issues. And of course, our reporting will not stop. Now, next week, there isn't a business clinic um, as such, but there is going to be a personal finance themed FT Digital Dialogue, which is all about investing and how to lock down um, your investments for the next six months and beyond. Now, it's a bit different um, from this. If you want to sign up for that, it's free, but you need to register um, online. I'll tweet out the link from my Twitter account um, after the show. I'm at Claire B. If you want to follow me and you can also look for the hashtag FT Digital Dialogues if you want to take part in that. We'll have more in the FT money section um, this weekend about bounce back loans. Um, me and Andy will be um, actively writing that um, after we hang up for today. But in the meantime, thanks again um, for getting in touch and we'll see you very soon on the next FT Business Clinic.